Now, we just mentioned Jeff Grimes. He coached a number of solid young men here at Brigham Young University while he was the offensive line coach between 2004 and 2006, including our next guest, a proud Mountain Crest Mustang from Cache Valley, Utah. Jake Caressa joins us on the Desiree First Credit Union Hotline. Jake, welcome to our Star Wars edition of BYU Sports Nation. Hey, thanks for having me, fellas. Hey, it's been, uh, been a long time coming. I'm finally on the show. <laughs> how do you How do you feel, man? Man, it's it's way better than I thought it was going to be. I just, yeah, I just in, internal satisfaction, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Well, hey. th- well, thanks for coming on. It was great to talk to you, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. All right. We'll see you guys at the next game. <laughs> are you Are you seeing Star Wars this weekend or or uh, next week? Uh, you need to give more options. Not everyone's into Star Wars. Um, Wait, so that was that was one of the things about coming on the show was that you would talk about Star Wars. <laughs> I thought we talked about this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not much of a Star Wars guy. I think I've seen most of the movies, but um, I don't have plans to make sure that I see it anytime soon. So I'll have to get uh, I'll get the cliff notes from you guys. Okay, Jake, <laughs> let's talk about one of your former Jedi Masters. Okay, Jeff Grimes is now taking over as the offensive coordinator at BYU. You played for him. What was your initial reaction when you heard that it was official and he would be the new offensive coordinator at BYU? So knowing Coach Grimes, just the kind of person that he is, uh, my initial reaction was I I was just excited because he is such a good coach. When you go through the check boxes of things that make a good coach, you know, he really does check all of those things off. That's why he's had so many good jobs so many high-paying jobs, and he has so much respect from people in that industry. And so in that regard, I was just excited as a BYU fan. Um, You know, my other reaction, I guess, uh, the one that was a little more surprising when when I did find out was, you know, I was a little bit surprised that Jeff wanted to be here at BYU so badly, you know, and – it, sh- it says a lot about his experience here the first time. It says a lot about his respect for the university. It says a lot about him knowing you know, the challenges that people always talk about with recruiting and with honor code and with academic standards. He knows all of those things, yet he's walking away from something that he's worked hard to get and he gets paid well to do in order to be here. And so his desire to be here is something that's impressive to me. The other thing that I was just, you know, I was just really, when I did find out, I was just surprised that Kalani and company were able to pull this off. You know, it, it, it must have taken some unique things in approach, and it must have taken people that haven't always signed off on this type of approach to finally sign off on it. And that includes, you know, salary, but also includes, um, you know, ability to bring in the remainder of the offensive staff a certain way, and, and to really help Jeff see that he's going to be in a, in a situation to succeed or he wouldn't have taken this. So those were my reactions. Overall, I would say ecstatic. You mentioned some of the boxes that he checks. What are those boxes, in your opinion? Well, one of the biggest things for me is he's tough. Um, you know, he is a, he's, a hard, he's a hard coach to play for in the sense that he is very demanding. Um, he has a standard that he sets, and he does not compromise. He doesn't make any concessions with anyone, no matter how talented. You have to meet up. You have to meet a certain level of effort, toughness, knowledge, all of that. And so, you know, he, he's demanding, and you need a coach that can do that. You know, the next thing is he's very, very detail oriented. The way that we approached our offensive game when he came in was a complete 180 to what it was prior. Um, What I mean by that is our offensive line was studying blitz packages and studying coverages and and studying down and distances. We weren't just studying the guy that's across from you. We were studying all 11 people on defense. We were studying their defensive scheme and their packages and their looks and what they do in the red zone, what they do – um, on the right side of the field or short, you know, short yardage, third and long, first and short. I mean, all of those kind of things started coming into the game plan. And he's very meticulous about those details. Um, so he's very detail-oriented, right? Uh, 
the other thing I think is he has an affinity for getting kids to respond to him. You know, I wouldn't say that when I was playing for him that he was the nicest guy ever um, to me all of the time, but I always respected him and I wanted to play for him. He was able to take things that need to be done for a successful offense and get kids to understand it. And I think that was missing last year. I think there were people that were really, really smart and people that know as much about offense as you could possibly know. But was how much of that knowledge was passed along to the kids in a way that they could execute it? And that's something that takes time, and it takes time to, to learn that skill set. So even though Jeff Grimes has never officially called plays with the title of being the offensive coordinator, he has a track record of teaching kids how to do the things that he wants them to do, and that's going to go a long ways. BYU offensive lineman from 2000, was it 2003 to 2006, Jake? I'm trying to get the specific years down. Yeah, 2003, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Yep. All right. It's hard to believe that we were both in school at that time, man. It's been a long (laughs) time. Dang, I didn't know I was as old as you guys. <laughs> you're old. You're a little bit older. <laughs> but, oh, I am. It's all good. Uh, you only get better with age, Jake. We're finding that out right now, <laughs> uh, which is why we wanted to have you on the program today. You brought up the fact that he has not been the official play caller as the offensive coordinator in a major college football program. How much does that concern you, or should it concern BYU fans? I think there's. Some, I think it's valid to be concerned a little bit. It means that it's a little bit unproven. I also think the people that are the most concerned about this are the people that know the least about how an offense is put together. And what I mean by that is he's been the, the run game coordinator at multiple schools. He's been involved in calling plays, executing plays, and implementing game plans at a really, really high level. And so... It's not just the offensive court. The offensive coordinator ultimately has, let's say he has 25 plays to choose from, right? And in a game and depending on situations, he ultimately says, I'm going to call play number 10 instead of play number two, right? Just to make it kind of simple. I'm going to call this play as opposed to this play. But there's a staff that puts those plays together. There's a staff that game plans and says, we're going to call these type of plays against these type of defenses. We've decided based on study, we're going to call these type of plays and these type of scenarios. There is no one available on the market or not on the market that has more experience doing that than Jeff Grimes. Now, that last little 10% is something that maybe he doesn't have as much experience doing. But the guys that have proven experience in that last 10%, those are guys like Matt Canada that make $1.2 million a year. We're not in the market for guys like that, right? And so a lot of people, in my opinion, are wrong in thinking that somebody who's actually called plays before at a lower level would be a better candidate. Absolutely false. The reason being, they've never recruited kids at this level. They've never gone up against schools that are recruiting these kids. They've never um, played in front of 60,000 people. They've never dealt with the media that happens at a school like this. I mean, look at what's happened the last few days with Jeff Grimes. And when you're coming from a lower level and you're the kind of person, there's a reason offensive coordinator at an F. CS school or at a junior college or somewhere makes the kind of money that they make and that Jeff Grimes makes the kind of money that he makes. As far as the the, the gap to cover for inexperience, he has the smallest gap of anyone that we even had a chance of getting. And I didn't, and a lot of people didn't think we had a chance to get him. So experience, check the box, even though he's never officially called plays. He's been on the booth. He's been in the field. He's decided what plays to implement a game plan. And then he's turned it over to Matt Canada. He's turned it over to um, Cam Cameron. He's turned it over to Gus Malzahn in order to actually call the plays in that exact moment. Also, he's received ringing endorsements from those people, proven play callers, proven head coaches, saying he's ready to call those plays. He's more than ready, and he's been ready. Let's finish with this, Jake. Uh, BYU returns a lot of its offense uh, next year. Um, How much can Jeff Grimes and this new offense – uh, change the result for BYU? Well, can't do worse, right? <laughs> That's what I've been saying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, they, they were uh, ranked 120th or worse in all the major offensive categories. Um, I think they can change it quite a bit. And the, 
the reason being is, is Jeff has a lot of experience, and I think that he – I would guess that he's going to work backwards, um, even a little bit how Robert and I did in comparison to what we saw last year. What I mean by that is his system is fluid. If you look at like a Matt Canada offense, right, or you look at all the different offenses that Jeff Grimes has been a part of, you know, he can look at where our talent and experience is and create – not create an entire offense, but create tweaks and wrinkles that are catered towards the personnel and toward the strengths that he's identified. Whereas the last couple of years, you know, we were lucky to have Taysom and Jamal to just be the kind of guys that can, can will you into a win because they're so talented. But, you know, last year I think that we had a system first and we were trying to sometimes fit a square peg into a round hole um, with the personnel that we had, with the experience that we had, and so there are certain offenses um, that require a really high-level quarterback. And there are other offenses that can cover up for an inexperienced quarterback. Same thing with all the other positions. I think Jeff has enough experience to kind of say, what do I really have on this team? You know, how good is my offensive line? How much can I lean on them? How good is my quarterback, my receivers, my running back? Like, what can I really lean on? and create not necessarily an offense, but create game plans that are catered toward the strengths and the personnel. And, um, you know, if that's done, we do have enough talent. We just have to make sure we're, we're tapping into where the talent is, where the experience is to get the results and not being completely reliant upon a quarterback playing a certain way or one receiver or, you know, a certain group. And, and so I, I think that, that offense, similar to a Matt Canada offense, will be very agile. It'll be mobile. It'll be unpredictable. Jake Caressa with us on BYU Sports Nation. Jake, I hope that the long wait was worth the wait, man. I hope it was worth all of the hype. <laughs> well, I hope it was I hope it was good enough the next time I can maybe come in there and give you guys a hard time. <laughs> oh yeah, we'd love to have you in the studio. We would love that. We also know I have you'll to be... watch Star Wars first though. Yeah, okay. That's Jerem's requirement. <laughs> I'm sure I'll watch it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll end up watching that tape or something like that. A compromise. I like how that worked out. Yeah. Jake, it's been great to have yeah. you on the program. We'll talk to you again soon, man. Absolutely. Have a good show, guys. Thanks, All righty. Jake Caressa joining us on the